Hello and welcome to this new video in the Scala playlist. In this video we again continue further with list collection. So moving on again, what I want to see is how can I loop into every item of the list collection. So if we call our country's list, we had three items into this. What I would want is to perform a loop on this. So I want to do some kind of operation. For now we will just see how to print each item. So there are two ways how you could do this. The first one is by using a for each method. When you do for each and inside this you can just say print ln and run. So what for each method will do is it will extract each item and print every item in new line. Another way is you could also use a for loop statement in this way. Let's say for i in countries list open the body of the loop print ln and i so if you run this you will get the same output one is the through the for each method and this is the for each or rather for statement simple way the ne next thing that we want to see is whether or not if a list contains a specific item so let's say if i call the countries list dot there is a method called as contains so i want to see does this item contains us so i'll search for this it will return me true or false if i just type for example u here you will get false why is because it will look for the entire item rather than the letter or alphabet so instead i will say complete thing so here it will search for the item so true or false and based on this what you can do is you can give a custom message output by using if so you can say if open the bracket write this inside open the body of if and say print ln you can say item found in list else print ln item not found in list let's run this quickly so here item was found if I just remove the u I will get item not found this is how you could go a bit step extra I am just printing to show you the logic instead of print ln you could actually do something and remember one thing as I've explained you the if if statement earlier what you do here mainly is produce any logic which will return you true or false we normally get true or false by comparing but here we are not comparing but I also mentioned during the if is you could use any logic which readily returns you true false so this method is returning us true false that's why I am not comparing again it with true false that is not required even if you do that is fine you could say is equal to true then it will come inside but not required because it is any uh, readily giving you those true and false things so that is how you could go one step ahead then there are similar kind of methods if I say countries list and say starts with if I want to see if the list starts with a specific item so I can say India and then run this here you will get false so actually this is not the way how you do it so whenever we want to check there are two methods starts with and ends with so starts with obviously means if the list begins with that item in order to use this there is a way you have to use sequence the short form for it is seq I'll cover this separately so for now we'll have to write it this way remember s is in uppercase if you write in lowercase it won't work so write in this way so sequence means now how we can use this the first item was India let me show you let us check the sequence of the countries list we have India UK and US so I want to check if the list is starting with this sequence I say India comma UK so this will give me true but if I change the sequence and instead write US this will return me false because the sequence was broken although US does exist in the country's list but is it is not in the same sequence so keep that in mind similarly what I can do is there is the opposite method for starts with called as ends with let's use this if I run this as it is this will throw 
false to us or return false to us if I write UK comma US this will return me true because that's how the sequence was so little bit variation as compared to the contains method next let us see how to sort the items or sort the list entirely for this I'll just create another list list 5 LST 5 is equal to list make sure you write the numbers in an unsorted way so I'm just writing 5 comma 2 comma 8 comma 1 and let's create this list now let's say I wanted to sort this list and we'll say LST 5 dot there is a method called as sorted so if I run this as you can see it is returning me a sorted list by default you will get ascending order in case you wanted descending what we will do is we'll just continue with the sort and sort sorted method accepts an argument for this you'll have to type or control space ordering dot again if you want help control space here what we want to sort is integers dot we will say reverse let's run this now you see we are getting the data in descending order similarly quickly I'll just create another list for text or we can just call our countries uh, itself countries list dot sorted and we can say ordering dot string dot reverse why string is because we have text items stored inside the countries list so you'll get the reverse index if I remove this it will be only normal sorting which means in ascending next let's say uh, I'll show you both of these examples on uh, text as well as integer we wanted to combine all the items and print them into a single line so what I mean is I have this numbers list if I just run this I get a list collection but what I want to do is I want to combine all of them together and just print them continuously so there is a method called as mk string if I run this let's see the output it will return the output as string and it has combined all the items inside it if in case you wanted a separator in between or a delimiter make string mk string method does accept a parameter so let's say I pass dash over here I'll get dash after every item or between every item similarly if I run this on countries countries list dot mk string I will be able to see all the items are printed continuously and you can also try out the separator and few things handy are let's say if I have a integer type of list and I want to do some aggregations on it so what we can do is simply there are ready methods available if I want sum of all the numbers I'll just say numbers list dot sum so I'll get 55 similarly if I say numbers list to dot max it will return me the largest number out of the list which is 10 and the contrary or the opposite way is to get the min numbers list dot min run this one there are also a couple of other methods that you should be aware of uh, aware in order to slice the data so let's say if I take numbers list to let's print this if I want the first five what I can do is we already know slice there is another method called as take so if I write five it will return me the first five items so another alternative to slice the data and similarly if I want to remove any items there is a method called as drop if I say drop four what it will do is it will remove the first four items and by combining both drop and take you can do more things like let's say if I wanted the items five six and seven so what you could do is just continue with this drop further and then after that say take three and run this this is how you could do somewhere to extract within the middle portion of the list 
So that's it in this video for now. We'll continue further in the next video on list collection. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.